Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Scatters Homestead. I am Candy, and I'm not at the farm. As you can tell, I'm sitting on a bed. <laughs> um, we are actually on a trip at this point, and um, we are heading off to Nashville. Um, and it's quite exciting because we're going to take you along with us, but it's not going to be in this video. Um, that's going to come in a couple of videos from now. I'm trying to catch up with video footage and that's why I am in the hotel room today. Sheldon is working. We're in Iowa at this moment. Sheldon's working all day outside of the hotel. So I am here. I am catching up on video. So you're going to kind of see a bunch of them just like drop in the next couple of days. And that's because it's catch up time. I'm not at work. I don't have a lot going on. I can just sit here for today and edit videos and it's been really good. So what I want to do is I want to take you a little bit through a journey of what is happening right now, the video that you're going to be seeing. So it's spring and we have had uh, such dreadful weather throughout this spring. It has been unusually cold. Um, well, I shouldn't say unusually cold, uh, colder than what we've had in the last three or four years. And it is throwing us off. My plants are downstairs. They're under lights. I can't get them into the garden. The garden is way too wet. Um, frost is still coming and we're trying to prepare for, you know, our personal garden, but we're also trying to prepare for the Scatters Mission Garden and um, items are coming in and we can't actually do anything with these items. And so it's like we're overloaded. Our yard is just getting fuller and fuller and fuller, but we can't do anything with them because the weather is not favorable. So right now, what you're seeing is you're seeing the truck coming in to deliver the healthy straw. It is that time again. Uh, the truck is here. They are dropping off the straw for the garden. Um, and that just feels great because it means uh, summer's here. It means that we're going to be growing food for people again. So we put garden straw on our community garden. And this is a game changer for us. We do not need to water as much. We do barely any weeding, which, hey, I think everybody would agree with me. Weeding is something you just don't want to do. And then the straw actually brings nutrients back into the soil as it breaks down. And so it is really awesome fiber to actually put into your soil. Um, we have had uh, the company Healthy Straw come and support us now. This is the third year that they've been supporting us with the mission. And, um, and so they had a company come in, drop off four skids of healthy straw for us, the garden straw, um, that we can put it out on the, the garden once it's planted. Obviously the garden isn't planted right now, so we're just pushing these skids aside <laughs> and we're waiting until the day that we can actually plant. So donations are extremely important to us. Everything that is planted, everything um, that is worked, everything that is covered is all donated. So we have had um, donations in the past. People have been bringing tractors, either one dropping them off for us to use or coming to work the soil themselves. We actually have one volunteer that very specifically dedicates his spring to come and work our garden. This will be the second year that he has done it and he does such a fantastic job. His name, name is Tim. Hi Tim, I know that you are watching. Um, and uh, he comes out and he works endless hours. I think he said that he worked something like in the 40s, 40 some um, hours last year, just amending the soil, working the soil. But again, if you look back, I'll show you some footage right here. This was actually bush last year. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a bunch of saplings. They've grown there and over the bunch of years, um, but that used to be a garden. Um, if you look at my videos way at the beginning, I'm sure I shared that with you. Um, our farm was a fruit farm. It was a you pick farm. And so our big lawn that we have on our, on our side where our house is, that was all fruit and this area that you're looking at right now, this was all 
fruit. And when my parents bought the property, my mom was sick, couldn't take care of it, and they sold. They actually uprooted everything and sold it to a place about an hour and a half, two hours away, and that farm is there and it's flourishing. So it's been my dream to actually make this a garden plot, and now it is. It is, uh, it is, it actually looks like a garden, and it grew plants last year and gave us vegetables, and it's gonna do the same this year as well. But Tim, our soil guy has been vigorously working in advance and ahead of us. He's trying to, you know, work work out his schedule so that he can be here and he can be uh, getting the soil ready for our planting day. Spring has also brought some sad news for us. Um, we have been watching our cows for a long time. We've owned these cows now for three years, not all of them, but we had Opal and Birdie right from the beginning. That was three years ago. We have been breeding them. We've been using AI and uh, we have done that for both cows. We also purchased a bull last year and we knew he was young um, and he was short. He's a short-legged Dexter, but his dad proved that he can still breed full-size jerseys. So it's like, okay, we're gonna trust this system we're gonna buy him. We did because I would like to get a little bit more of a jersey mix into our herd um, because I would love, love to start breeding mini jerseys and selling them for milk. Uh, but uh, we bought this little guy hoping that he would be able to breed these ladies and he hasn't done so since. And um, well, Sheldon will tell you the rest of it. set up a little fence here in the corner of our um, property right by the cow pens and stuff and uh, waiting for the cows to come out I put some feed in this little uh, feeder here where Finley is I've uh, electrified the fence so that the cows will stay in here the reason why I'm doing it is unfortunately birdie is um, not conceiving and so we have decided that if she was not going to conceive this spring, we were going to um, put her into the freezer. So tomorrow we are having a friend coming over, and we are going to uh, to skin uh, to kill and skin Birdie, and we are going to uh, and then send it over to the local uh, abattoir to get cut and wrapped. Um, so it's going to hang there for 14 to 21 days, somewhere in that range, um, and so Birdie is going to. Uh, feed us for the next year, hopefully. Um, and that is just the circle of life. Uh, cows come. We were hoping that Birdie would be the future of our farm um, with raising uh, the next generation of calves and stuff like that, that we bought her as a heifer, planning that she would be um, calf. And so we tried AI twice with her and then we, and both times failed. And then we bought a bull last year he was going to be sexually mature by um, he was going to be mature by September, so we were planning to have calves this June, July kind of thing. Um, and we saw him attempting. We thought he was too short at that time. He was too small. He's a short-legged Dexter with a little bit of jersey in him. And so what we decided to do is wait till this year. And now uh, we're at the point where. We saw um, Alfie uh, riding her. I've seen it probably two or three, two or three months in a row, and we just figured that if she was not going to uh, conceive now in May, we were going to put her in the freezer for um, for consumption, and uh, and then we were going to move on from from there. For me personally, I have had cows my entire life. I lived in a dairy farm. We had hundreds of cows. So seeing a cow being butchered was not ever a big deal. But this one was very different for me because I actually grew a relationship with Birdie. She was a wild one. It's a bittersweet day today. One, we are getting uh, Birdie, who's been with us for three years. Uh, we're gonna have her processed starting today. Um, I got her out of the fence, separated her from the other animals. I got the goat with her here, which isn't a big deal. So, uh, 
Right now, I'm just waiting for my um, my help to come, and we will um, we will take care of Bertie at that point. Well, it's bittersweet, but uh, we butchered Bertie, and uh, now we're gonna bring her to the processor. To see that meat actually go into the butcher was a proud moment um, because we actually raised that meat ourselves. And in this day and age, you just have no clue what you're buying at the grocery store. And over the last couple of years, I don't know how many times I've been overwhelmed going to a grocery store and looking at the item, seeing what's all in the item. Um, the ingredients list can be exhausting. And it's, there's item, there's, there's ingredients in there that you don't, you can't even pronounce. Um, so to know that we grew this meat, we knew how the animal was raised. It was raised well loved and we knew what we were putting into it is just luxury to us. And we're so grateful for that. And, um, and, and we're looking forward to the time where we can bring this meat home and bring it into the freezer because right now it is hanging in a freezer at the butchers and uh, when we get back from our holidays we are going to pick up that meat and you'll see us bringing it into the house but for now i want to thank you guys so much for joining us and i want to encourage you that you might have some limitations but that does not mean you're limited see you later